I aim to motivate and inspire viewers to see the clothes they wear as an expression of their personality and their beliefs. This is the Slow Wardrobe. Come and have a look. Hello, welcome to episode 36 of the Slow Wardrobe podcast. My name is Linda and I am your host. In this episode, the biggest part is dedicated to showing you in detail the limited edition herringbone linen fabrics that I'm introducing into the layer cake range in the shape of baggies and dusters. Before that, there's going to be a short section about the uh, knitting that I've done since I last spoke about knitting two weeks ago when I did a review of 2020. One of my last finished projects is right here, the Carlina jumper that some of you have asked me to model, which I'm going to do in the layer cake section. So first, a little bit about my knitting. I have been working on a sock, which I've shown on Instagram. Um, it's just a potato chip knitting in front of the TV and I'm still stuck on, as you can see, <laughs> doing a cable on the leg. This is another set of socks for my husband. I finished the first one and I'm halfway down the leg of the second one, I think. Not even halfway down yet. Um, so I'm knitting them on my 2.25 millimeter uh, sim uh, signature needles, DPNs. DPNs are still my favorite needles for sock knitting. They are the fastest for me and the sharper the better, which is why I'm hooked on signatures. It's a bit of an acquired taste, especially these very uh, sharp ones, which they call stilettos, and they really are. I love having very sharp needles, but not everybody does. So two and a quarter millimeter, which is a great size for me if I'm using standard sock yarn. And the yarn is uh, a Rico Designs, and I will show the name below it's a it's a discontinued yarn though um, it's like a speckle and i love it it was in the jumper that i'm still knitting and then this is a lighter color that i'm doing for socks when you look up close it actually has a lot of different colors in it i'll show you a close-up of it here like purple and pink and green and yellow but all very soft and muted so um, from a distance, the yarn looks almost grey. Then the other thing that I'm knitting is, it's a bit of a, well, it's a secret project, really. I'm using one of the John Arben yarns. They do a whole series of mini hanks in this. I'll show you a photograph of the whole set. And then uh, what I'm doing, what I've done here is done a little sample in different needle sizes because I'm going to felt this sample and see how the yarn felts because the projects that I'm knitting on, uh, working on a new design, um, I'm, I intend to felt it and then have a finished garment that has been felted after it's been knitted. So fingers crossed that that'll work. So that's an exciting new project. I don't know by heart which color this exactly is, but again, I will check that and put it in the down bar. When held next to the socks, it actually has a lot of very similar colors, but slightly more muted still. It's just beautiful. Can't be a coincidence that I've chosen that. There it is. So um, those are the only two projects that I've been working on um, in the past two weeks. It's kind of funny because I have a couple of people very loudly discussing what I'm doing standing right in front of the window. I, a lot of people seem to think that windows of studios and shops are somehow one way and they can see in but they don't think I can see out. I don't know what it is, but 
I regularly have people almost with their noses flat against the window to see what I'm doing. And that's what these two are doing. I think they're even starting to film me now, which is interesting. So there we are. <laughs> anyway, so those are my only two uh, knitting projects uh, this time around. More about this very exciting one as soon as I can whip it up. Wish me luck for felting my little sample. And um, so far, I, I love knitting with it. I'm working on three and a half millimeter needles, which is probably what I'm going to go for for the project because I like the, the fabric that it gives me. And um, this yarn, Yarnadelic is just delish. It's lovely to work with. So um, onwards and upwards to the layer cake section of the podcast. Lots to show you. Lots of the um, herringbone linens, which are a limited edition. So there's a lot of it in this episode, but there may not be much in future episodes because um, I would prefer to talk about fabrics that you can then actually buy from me rather than thinking, oh, I'd like that, and then not be able to. Um, Slightly jumping ahead, this is the okra colorway, which of course colors quite nicely with my jumper. Much more of it in the second part. I hope you enjoy the uh, layer cake section. Here we go. I just quickly want to show you before I show my new jumper and then we get stuck into the herringbone linens. Just the dress that I've been wearing this entire past week with the cold snap that we had last weekend. Uh, the week before already leading up to it, I was cold at the studio every day. I thought I could just do with a warmer layer. So having recently done the wool dresses, the um, ink chalk stripe and the pink herringbone got the majority lion's share of the attention. But there was a third wool fabric, this one, the uh, window pane. It's got a blue marl, grey blue marl, with this very, very dark wine coloured window pane. And it shows a little bit better because I found a very similarly coloured uh, t shirt that I'm wearing with it. The thing is, out of the three fabrics, the pink and the ink chalk stripe, which I both adore and look great on me, it was actually this one where I thought with all the different outfits that I'm wearing and all the different combinations I can think of, I think this fabric works best. It's the most neutral out of the three almost. And because I've got so many other bits to my layer cake uh, wardrobe at home that stand out more or that are less neutral I thought actually this is a nice one to add so instead of a pink dress or a blue dress which is what I kind of thought I would end up with I've gone for this one and I've been wearing it all week I mean come on that means sitting at the um in my office at the desk for a big part of the day so I'm scrunched up a lot of the time and the only place that I can see that I've been wearing it is a little bit here where you know the edge of the fabric is starting to bunch a little bit but apart from that my gosh very impressed with that and of course this is a fabric that is just this limited edition I don't have that much of it it's a one-off I get it from um, a guy that I made a lovely connection with very early on when I started to make layer cake he, um, you may, some of you who've been customers for a long time may remember this story about him buying up end of line production fabrics from some uh, big design houses, which means that the quality of the fabric is fantastic. And when he has a fabric, he thought I kind of lost interest in the stuff that he had, but just at the start of this winter, I got back in touch with him. I said, do you still do that kind of stuff? He said, yeah, of course. So the pink and the blue and this window pane are from him. So I got in touch. He sent me some 
photographs of what he had and I raced up to London to get them. Anyway, what I wanted to show you is not just how this fabric sits and how it looks even after a full week of wear every day over the top of my other layer cakes, but also how it looks with the high lows that I've paired with it. These aren't my high lows, I've just grabbed them from stock. And just to show you what it looks like to go for a whole outfit in one color. I think they were, work really well as high lows. A window pane uh, wool, I think always looks great. It's kind of Paddington Bear kind of thing. <laughs> or Rupert Bear, I don't know which one of the two but I'm being called Paddington Bear and Rupert Bear by people who see me in the window panes. So just wanted to show you this. Now I'll show you my jumper. Here it is. What do you think? I'm showing it with a pair of overalls because that's what I had lined up to start showing you the different herringbone garments that I've got ready to show you now because we've started producing them following the orders that have been coming in. But before that, here's my jumper. So as you can see, it's got enough positive ease to sit nice and loose on my hips, which in combination with baggies and play suits, etc., I think looks great. It's just the right length so that it stops before my pockets hit. I will show it in the course of this video with a couple of other outfits as well, so you don't just see it like this. But I wanted to show you first with a really neutral outfit so that you get a good idea of what the jumper is like and how it sits on me. Let me show you it with um, a um, duster on top. That, that, that was what I was planning to wear with these. Like this. So this is the black herringbone worn with the charcoal linen, similar in color impression, the herringbone being slightly lighter, of course, because of all that natural undyed linen in there. And then worn with the jumper. What do you think? So this is an outfit where the jumper and the a duster finish at about the same height but of course if I would wear a longer jumper it would come underneath and depending on what kind of silhouette you're after that can be very effective I just wanted to show it like this though also to show how easy it is to wear one of the short dusters over the top of even an oversized jumper I'll lose the jumper and we'll get stuck into herringbone and the jumper will make a comeback a couple of times later in different combinations. Here we go. Without the jumper, just the duster over the top of a pair of OVs. I love this combination. I think it looks great. It's like how to make a pair of overalls look dressy, right? And then of course you can grab a scarf if you want to dress it up even more. Here's the double dart. Just let it fall the way it does. Ready, easy, isn't it? So I'll put something else in between again, like I had with the jumper, but this time I'll grab a dress. Dress in between. Let's lose the scarfy. Not because there's anything wrong with it. It goes with the outfit really well. But just because I want to show you the look of this without the accessories. So um, charcoal overalls, pinstripe dress, black herringbone duster. Uh, what shall I show you next? Oh, I'll swap the overalls for baggies in this color. So we keep going with that theme and the neutrals. Don't worry if you're waiting for color. <laughs> I've got lots of color to come. Oh, and one other thing in, in terms of color, with this top, 
you'll see me wearing lots of different outfits and this top which is this dark maroon color will really only go with my shoes the rest of the outfit doesn't have anything like this in it and that's something to keep in mind if you've got your top and your shoes kind of matching together then you have a lot of freedom to play with everything else in between so your top doesn't always necessarily need to be color coordinated with your outfit if you connect it and color coordinated with your shoes then you're good as well and especially if you've got such a neutral palette as this if you then stick with that theme now this of course goes into the rusts but it's still in the red spectrum and of course these and my shoes don't match exactly either so then by loosely coordinating these other colors it's still a cohesive uh, complete outfit altogether let's see how this top fares with all the others i can always swap for a different top if it starts clashing but it'll be interesting to see whether i'll be able to pull off this color top with everything else even though there's nothing else in the outfit apart from my shoes that kind of ties it in let's see how we go because from a styling perspective that's quite an interesting trial i think Okay, so um, I'm going to lose the overalls and swap them for baggies. There. Very similar, of course, to what I was just wearing, but instead of overalls, these are the baggies in the same black charcoal, black charcoal, black herringbone <laughs> linen. been really encouraging this past week a lot of you have jumped on these fabrics of course I've tried to make the offer as uh, compelling as I could in terms of uh, the cost because this fabric is so much more expensive uh, because it's a very different weave and the feel of it it's like unbelievable anyway um, what I'll show you next because of course the dress is covering a big part of the baggy so I'll swap the dress I'll stick with the, the neutral colors but I'll swap the dress for um, a tabard here we go sticking with the charcoal but there you see the uh, baggies a bit more not quite as covered as they were by the dress this has come straight off the hanger in the studio which is what explains this pleat it's been hanging underneath a bigger size apologies for that first thing when i film these in the studio the iron isn't on yet because andrea waits with coming in until i finished filming so that we don't have the uh, noise of the machines in the background but it also means that i can't iron anything yet we've got an industrial iron steam iron which takes time to heat up etc so bear with me on any folds that you see on the garments considering actually that they are hanging here still because we're not moving to and from shows so there is a lot less movement of the garments it's a miracle the way they still look to be honest which is pretty good i think okay uh let's bring in some color i promised let's do color Violet, together with the black herringbone. Of course, this black herringbone, because it's so neutral, I could have picked pretty much any color in the collection and it would have looked great with it. But I thought I'd go for this. I don't show you the violet that often, I don't think. Such a nice color. And of course, you can take it the next step. Let me get out of the black herringbone because I've got other colors to show you. I'll stick with the, vi uh, the violet, but I will dial up the herringbone teal pretty safe bet of course together with purple because opposite ends of the spectrum they really pump each other up and set each other off meanwhile though how are we doing with the combination of the top and the shoes with it i think it's fine what do you think even if we bring this in Looks good, doesn't it? Absolutely fine. Very different colors, but 
fabulous and none of them cancel each other out they play very nicely together of course you can go in the other direction as well here with this for example which has got purple and green in it oh and teal I mean look at that wow but still though no problem with this wine color the purple in here is I was going to say yes well it is it is it's, it's got slightly more red in it uh, because it is dyed on the yak blend 2 which in its natural color has a brownish tint so that brings some red into the purple which then of course ties in with this again because the halo actually has a slight tint of this not planned that's just the way it's turned out but boy do they look good together don't you think okay let me put this back on where was I going to go next oh yes of course we can do with the teal what I did with the the black herringbone and rather than go for contrast to wear it with I can go for complement let's have a look this is a teal synergy top remember difference between synergy and step top the step top has got the same sleeves as the duster but the synergy top has no sleeves and comes with a knitting pattern to knit and yarn of course in this color to knit your own sleeves So this is the exact color of the thread that was used to weave this teal. So the dark teal, which is a blend of this and black, goes down, goes darker in color, but this is just the plain teal color. And I do not have any more of this fabric, so I only have a couple of the Synergy tops available in this, which I think go really well. Let me show it to you without the duster so you can see the synergy top a little bit better which of course can be worn beautifully by itself over the top of other layer cakes or like I do here with a pair of baggies and then you either knit the sleeves or not or just knit shorter sleeves of course that is all optional and and depending on on what you fancy can add a panel here in the front if you want to but you don't have to I think I have yeah just to remind you this is the synergy top sorry plant this is the synergy top in white with white sleeves and a white panel and as you can see this is the one with the raw edges but we don't do the raw edges now we just do them finished like this So, I'll stay with this, but I'll change my herringbone because I've got more colors to show you. Let's get loud, let's get loud. This is the okra herringbone with the teal synergy top. Still going strong with my wine colored sleeves and shoes. Not a problem, I don't think. When I started making the baggies we did a bit of pre-production of the baggies coming up to making this offer for those of you who don't know what i'm talking about with this offer you buy a uh, two pieces of the herringbone linen duster and a pair of baggies and you get 20 percent discount on them both which takes them back to the pretty much back to the, the regular price of the uh, duster and the baggies. Uh, runs out, offer runs out Sunday evening, the 31st of January. So this, this coming weekend. So what I was going to say, when I started making, when we started making the baggies, I said to Andrea, okay, let's just make them in the four most neutral colors so we'll leave out the okra and we'll leave out the pink because I can't imagine 
that people will want to wear yellow or pink trousers. How wrong was I? My gosh, the pink has been by far the most popular, especially for the trousers. After all these years, I thought I knew you guys, but clearly I've still got a lot to learn. <laughs> what do we think? I absolutely think it's stunning. Well, I'm I'm not really a matchy-matchy kind of girl. I tend to go with different bits, top and bottom. When it comes to that long dress that I was wearing in the in the window pane and then trousers to go with it, that I'm more inclined to wear. But an outfit like this, like a two-piece, a very clear two-piece, both in the same fabric, then I'm always like, well, why don't I jazz it up? Why don't I play with it? Still, I think this looks fab. So maybe at the age that I am, <laughs> as old as I am, maybe I'll ch start changing my ways and maybe I will start wearing coordinates. I really like it. And then, of course, you can pull it together again with something like this. Doesn't it look good? This, of course, ties my hair in as well. Would look different if I had brown hair, this, and I'm very aware of it. So that's another thing to keep in mind, actually. Your hair color and then the color of your accessories. Ooh. I hadn't thought of that before. Now, um, wearing this, did I line up anything? Oh yeah, of course. I have to show this to you with bitter lime, don't I? Let's swap this for bitter lime. Oh boy, do I like this. I hadn't tried any of this because Andrea only finished these dusters that I showed you yesterday evening so this morning was the first time that I could actually pull them off the rack and I just teamed them with the different colors that I thought would be cool to show them with but to actually put them on and see what they look like now while I'm filming it's the first time that I'm doing it sheesh I like this oh my goodness the the okra of course pulls out the yellow in the bitter lime and I'll show you the bitter lime in a minute with the apple colored herringbone. And then you'll see that the green gets pulled out of this color. But here is the yellow. Sunshine. My goodness, I love it. Okay, um, on to the green, the green herringbone, which I only have baggies of, but I could keep this on. Let's try that with and then without the duster. Apple, bitter lime, and okra. Oh yeah, yeah, I really like what the apple does to the bitter lime. Oh actually, I can show this to you with my jumper as well, can't I? My gosh, am I getting warm especially with this jumper on. And there's all this dust on the floor. I vacuum right before I do this. And then in the middle of it, the dust bunnies are starting to gather again already. My goodness, a working studio. The dust is incredible. Anyway, here's the jumper showing you with the shorter dress that it's just the right length to still have access to my pockets. And of course, with the coloring with this yellow, you can see it tying in with the bitter lime really nicely. I'll take the bitter lime dress off and then show this just with the baggies as well. Love this though, really like the combination. And of course, because there's the, the dark pink in it, that ties in nicely again with the shoes. Okay, loose the dress. The pockets on the baggies are a little bit lower. See that? Really like this combination. Very spring-like, very cheerful. I just realized when I was putting the jumper on, 
that I had this hanging here. So it's a really nice way to tie that color in even a little bit further. The bitter lime kind of you can see actually if I move you can see what's wrong with the jumper the fit and everything is perfect the length of the sleeves is exactly what I wanted because I can hide my hands in it when I'm working behind my desk but with the floats of the pink yarn I didn't make them loose enough I'm always petrified that my floats are too loose so I lined them up very nicely with the rest of the knitting and although with all the other colors I did fine with these I made them too tight look and hang on if I take this off here you can see it when I'm pulling my arms up do you see how it starts bunching here it's because this is too tight look you can see it around my arms how it pulls so I'm going to see if I've got enough floats to actually cut them and tie them off because this will bother me I want to wear this jumper every day and feel fantastic in it so note to self if you're gonna knit something like this be careful that you leave your floats long enough everywhere because that's where I've gone wrong on this jumper the, at the top it doesn't really matter because you have, don't have to move so much actually they might be now they're about the same the higher ones yes but at the bottom because this sits quite low you really have to be able to move and I don't have it anywhere with the white it's just on that red isn't that weird how did I get that so wrong and obviously didn't notice it while I was knitting because I would have gone back to correct it still I'll keep you posted because I'm going to change that I'll show it to you actually before if I do anything to it I'll show it to you before the back of the fabric before I've done anything and then what my solution is if I can find one and now I have <laughs> dust bunnies all over my jumper as well okay um, I'm not done yet um, I'm going to show you this beautiful light green color which again goes with lots of other layer cake colors because it's the same green that's in behind the uh, the apple the moss the moth peacock and brick they all have this green in them but i'm gonna dial it back down and go back to a more neutral outfit let me know what you think of this This is the natural undyed linen as a synergy top combined with the apple herringbone. The other thing that you can really see with an outfit like this because it doesn't cover as much of the trousers is how this herringbone fabric moves. It is divine. And then of course you can, have I got anything up? Uh, yeah. Got this one here. I was going to say, then you can add something to tie in the trousers, or you can go for contrast, or you know, any of them really. You can even do the the double scarf look and have both of them tie this together. Mix them up on purpose, of course. If you can find your front and your back. There we are. See, I'm not making, I'm leaving it messy on purpose. I'm not doing a job on the scarves to organize them, but just a, a jumble of color to complement what's already there and to really finish the outfit or keeping it more simple. You've heard me say it so often before statement necklace is the typical statement necklace just means that 
it either has a big pendant or it has a prominent color to draw the eye. And if you make that in any of the colors that I'm wearing or even just silver, it really pulls the outfit together. So one of the reasons that I was putting this on is not just to see what happens when you wear that neutral color with one of the other colors of the herringbone, but also because there is one herringbone color that I haven't shown you. No, there's two. There's the pink, which is coming. But there's one neutral herringbone color that I haven't shown you that I'm keen to show you as well, which is the steel one. Let me grab that now. steel herringbone super neutral of course because it's got a fairly light gray in it already then together with the undyed linen in the herringbone you end up with a very 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 neutral color it's a very light gray taupe almost and the reason I wanted to show that to you kind of separate from everything else is because out of all the different herringbone baggies, this color is the one that you can combine most easily with any of your other layer cakes, especially if you're not used to wearing like trousers underneath a dress, for example. If you think, well, I love the dresses, I love the baggies, I'm not sure if I enjoy them together or if I feel confident wearing them together. If you like the look when I show it to you, then you could consider wearing a very neutral color like this with a dress. I'll show it to you in combination with the pink wool dress, which is of course quite a dominant color. And then you'll see how neutral these trousers are with it. They're still there, but it's not like, is she wearing trousers in a dress? You know, it doesn't draw as much attention. Let me show you. Here's the dress with the baggies. See what I mean? The dress really has the main part and the baggies are there, but they don't stand out as much. It's partially because the dress is brighter, but it's also because the baggies are so neutral. And then of course you can dial down the coloring of the rest of the outfit. I don't have any of the steel um, dusters to show you yet, but of course this has got some of the same colors in it. So this is a really good combination as well with the steel baggies, the steel herringbone baggies, and then this duster as a more neutral outfit. And then instead of the dress, I could put the step top, the synergy top on again to keep it all very neutral or I can move into different colors. So the most neutral of our baggies, the steel, stunning as well with charcoal. Let me just quickly show you that because it's such a good combination. Look at this guys. Isn't that beautiful? I absolutely adore this combination. It really ties in well with the, with the red, of course, that I'm wearing, but even disregarding that, just the combination of the charcoal of the smock together with the steel herringbone of the baggies. Great combination, I think. Also, um, I, in my rush, I grabbed a size two smock. And of course that is really roomy on me. But again, I've shown it to you in the past. You may be able to go up a size and kind of get away with it. What I have to do in order to wear a size two successfully is make sure that I don't bunch up the shoulders. So, hide the bralette which keeps creeping out from underneath my top because it is a razor back. So if I put this really on top of my shoulders I get this. 
See that? If you ever order a layer cake and you put it on, you think, oh, this isn't right. It's too much fabric here. Pull the shoulders further apart and then it smooths out. If your shoulders are narrower and your bust is bigger, this is more likely to help to, to happen. So if it does, pull them more towards the corners of your shoulders. The chance that they'll fall off is quite small. If they do fall off, then of course we can do something to make the fit better for you. But try that first and see how that sits, if it's comfortable. If it's too far, if it doesn't work, then of course. But just keep in mind, if you see this, you think, hey, then pull it nice and flat. Okay, <laughs> end of digression. Back to the steel and the charcoal, which I just wanted to show you because it's so nice. And now on to the final color, the pink herringbone. Here it comes. Pink herringbone with the charcoal. I thought I'll keep that on for the sake, the point of continuity. With the matchy matchy duster over a smock, which I hadn't shown you yet. I just realized I'm glad I grabbed this smock. Like now, more or less coincidentally, I realized how well this fabric goes with the pink herringbone wool that I showed you. If you look up close to the pink herringbone wool, it has um, it's co combined with a marled gray, not with a natural undyed linen. But because the pink is bright in both of them, that's what dominates and the resulting fabric looks very similar. So I'm going to show you in a minute this fabric with the pink wool and show you how good it looks. But before then, let's add some more crazy color to brighten this whole outfit up and show you that, yes, you can dial it down with one of your neutrals or you can dial it up. Sunshine, anybody? The violet, which has got a bright, bright fuchsia color in it. Not dissimilar to this pink. It's not the same, but it's not dissimilar. And then the lovely, lovely pink herringbone. I hope you're going to be able to see on this video how herringbone, the herringbone fabrics just shimmer. That's why I keep turning around and moving to hopefully show that off because the shimmer in this fabric is just stunning. Right, nearly there. I'm going to show you the pink dress now with it so we can go even more pink. I know the pink and purple ladies out there, my pink and purple layer cakes. I know you love them, so let's have some more pink. I mean, come on, how good does this look together? Isn't that crazy? The dust bunnies think so. <laughs> I am so amazed how well this goes. These fabrics have nothing to do with each other, really. And they have everything to do with each other. Hope that showed you. I think this is a fantastic outfit. If you think the duster is too much, then of course you can just wear the dress with the trousers or a shorter dress. This is the longer dress with the trousers. But I think all three of them together, my gosh. <laughs> all right oh last but not least i'll finish again with one of my own makes i'll put the i'll take the duster off and i'll put the um jumper back on 
because that ties in again with the with the pink okay jumper dress baggies the pink speckles of course are being picked up by the by the pink in the dress right i hope you enjoyed all my layer cake in this episode rather a lot of herringbone but it's probably the one and only time that the herringbone is going to feature because it's a limited edition fabric and I don't think it's fair to keep showing you fabrics if I don't have them available anymore. So the herringbone will keep featuring if I have some fabric left but once the fabric runs out then the herringbone will disappear. It's a one-off that I've tried and unless everybody starts clamoring for more then maybe in the future I will bring it back but it was meant to be a one-off so once it's gone it's gone the um, special offer of 20% off when you buy two pieces runs out on Sunday night after that they're still available and until we run out of stock but not at the special price anymore you still be able to use your 10 for friends discount code instead so there'll be 10% discount instead of the 20 that's part of the special offer I hope you enjoyed this episode again and I'll see you again soon.